What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we went over four of the Battle Frontier facilities. The Battle Factory, the Battle Dome, the Battle Pike, and the Battle Palace. Talked about their intricacies, how the different modes work, and we went over the different uh, facility heads, and what you're going to have to deal with when facing them. And in this episode, we got three more facilities to go over. The first of those is directly above me, and that is the Battle Arena. This is Battle Arena. Let the toughest teams gather. Now, this is another one of those facilities where you're going to need a very specific team to get through it. The good news is, is you only need to make, you only need to get three Pokemon if you really want to conquer this place. And to be fair, the same can be said for the other facilities, but you tend to want a little more variety for those. For this facility in particular, you are focusing on some very specific aspects of battling. The way that the battle arena works is that you get exactly three turns to impress the judges, not to necessarily knock out the Pokemon that you're going up against. The three categories that you're being judged against are mind, which is based on basically just dealing damage. However, this does not give you, you do not reward or not given a point in the mind category, excuse me, if you use counter, mirror coat, or bide, or fake out, which actually deducts a point. It does not give you a point. Um, you, however, do not lose a point if you your move is stopped by something like protect, detect, or endure. Well, specifically protect and detect. However, the opponent that used that move does lose a point in the mind category. So that's how you get a point in that one. In sk the skill category, which is the second one, you are judged on your accuracy. If your move is used and it is used successfully, you get a point, plain and simple. However, if that move misses, you lose a point, plain and simple. However, if the move was caused to fail by protect or detect or flinching, then no points are deducted. Or if you get a super effective move, you get two points. The last category is body, which is basically just whichever Pokemon has more HP, they get that point. And you just need to win two out of those three points to advance to the next trainer. Plain and simple. Now, personally, I know a cheat code for this place. It's not the best cheat code, but it will be able to get you through... It will be able to get you through at least to the Frontier Brain themselves very very simply and that is by getting an absol with very very good attack stats and very very good speed stats then you're going to want to teach it swift aerial ace faint attack and shockwave all four moves that cannot miss this is my in my opinion the easiest way to get through because although you might not win in the body category every time you will almost certainly win the mind and skill category every single time you know, again, assuming that the other trainer doesn't just use offensive moves, that hurts you more. But as long as you're faster, you should be fine. So get an Absol that can get you all four of these moves, and you'll be able to get through this place with relative ease. But otherwise, yes, you do need a specific team to get through this. Now, once you get to Greta, who is the Arena Tycoon, this is where things get very interesting. So her Pokemon that you're going to be fighting against the first time are... Heracross, Umbreon, and Shedinja. Yes, Shedinja. Now, if you have this Absol I was talking about, that Shedinja should not be a problem. The other two, on the other hand, are a little bit more of an issue. So the uh, Heracross has a Salic Berry, which I want to say... I'm trying to remember exactly what a Salic Berry does. I want to say that... Oh, gosh, what does it do? Holy crap, I cannot... I honestly cannot remember. What does a Salic Berry do? Um, I think it raises speed when their health is low, I think. Yes, I think that's exactly what it is, because uh, Heracross does have Endure. It also has Mega Horn, Rock Doom, and Reversal. Reversal is also good for that. So it expects you to hurt, hit it really hard, but not quite die. Have the Salic Berry um, raise its attack and then just beat the crap out of you with Mega Horn, Rock Doom, and Reversal. Anyway, then, it has, then her Umbreon has Faint Attack, Psychic, Confuse Ray, Body Slam, and Leftovers. Obviously, this is meant to stall, but continue to do damage. And then Shedinja has a Bright Powder with Shadow Ball, Return, Aerial Ace, and Confuse Ray. In the Gold Challenge, you will have that same Umbreon, but this time it'll have Double Edge, a Psychic, Confuse Ray, and Rest with a Chesto Berry. The Gengar is going to have Leftovers with Psychic, Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and Destiny Bond. And then you have Breloom with Focus Punch, Spore, Giga Drain, Headbutt, and a Lumberry, and I'm tr I think a Lumberry, um, just, I think it just heals any status condition, I believe, not like, um, oh my gosh, not like a full heal, but like, uh, like, a, like the attack was lowered or whatever, so, that's how the battle arena works, oh my gosh, sorry, lot to explain in this place, it is such a freaking, uh, it's such a nightmare trying to go through this place and explain it all. I apologize if my explanations aren't making the most sense. I'm really trying here. I'm not doing this on script or anything. Maybe I should have scripted this. 
but then it wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been able to really do live commentary on the flip side so there is that let's talk about the battle pyramid next which is also another really difficult place to explain holy freaking crap okay so the way that the battle pyramid works okay so the battle pyramid is seven floors of battling you are going to be going into really dark rooms where you're going to have to battle trainers and gather items with a specifically given to you item bag that is different from your own item bag with this you are given i believe a high proportion and an ether from the start you can collect up to 10 more items as you go throughout the place you will encounter wild Pokemon and you will encounter trainers. Every time you beat a trainer, the floor will become more progressively lit up and they will also give you hints on where to either find items or how to get out of the floor. On top of that, every single time you are about to start a challenge, you will, uh, I believe it's, you talk to this lady right here and she's going to give you a hint on what you're gonna come across. She'd be pleased to tell you what misfortunes await in the pyramid. So you can choose whichever one you're gonna go against. It's different between, um, depending on the level you pick, but I'm gonna go open level. Uh, ah, I see a shower of sparks, and in it I see your Pokemon struggling with paralysis. So this means that you're gonna, I'm going to be coming across nothing but electric types in my Battle Pyramid Challenge for the next seven floors. These Pokemon will be Plusle, Mine, and Pikachu, Electabuzz, Vileplume, Manectric, Breloom, and Jolteon. So basically Pokemon that can cause paralysis. Obviously they weren't all electric types. But she can tell you about any number of a different types. It, all different types are possible to encounter um, in, the battle, uh, in the Battle Pyramid. Excuse me. Um, and then there are set Pokemon for each of those different types. I will not go over every single one of them because that's just absolutely absurd. But basically, you need a team that is prepared to handle all this stuff. It is going to be very helpful if you can have a Pokemon with ar aromatherapy or a Pokemon with natural cure like what my Altaria has, which means that every single time I switch her out, her status moves go away. Um, so you want things like that as you're going through this place because status conditions are a plenty. On top of that, you still do need to have a team that is well-rounded enough to deal with the plethora of trainers you're going to come across on there. And then on top of all of that, we have Pyramid King Brandon, who is, in my opinion, the most difficult of all of the Frontier Heads to come across and defeat. Here's why. Silver Challenge, Regirock, Quick Claw, Ancient Power, Super Power, Earthquake, and Explosion. Registeel, Leftovers, Metal Claw, Iron Defense, Earthquake, and Toxic, Regice, or Regice, Chest Oberry, Ice Beam, Amnesia, Thunder, Rest. Yes, he uses all three legendary golems. But it gets better because in the gold challenge, he has Articuno with a Scope Lens, Blizzard, Aerial Lace, Water Pulse, Reflect, Zapdos with a Lumberry, Thunder Detect, Drill Pack, Light Screen, and Moltres with a Bright Power, Fire Blast, Aerial Lace, Hyper Beam, Safeguard. This guy is no freaking joke. He is going to wipe the floor with you if you are not prepared. However, <laughs> however, the best thing that you can do to get through this place is when you go up against, uh, you're ready for Brandon, make sure you have a water type and a fire type on hand. That's the best type you can have. I know people would say, oh, use a fighting type in generation three. Fighting types were not a very good way of dealing with the legendary golems because they all had high defenses and fighting type attacks all did physical damage. You can't get any special type attack that uh, special type fighting attack of any kind in this generation and you can't really exploit them in that way. So you're going to want to fire a type to deal with Registeel and Regice and you're going to want a water type to deal with Regirock. The only one that's going to be kind of challenging in that regard is Regice because Regice does have a very high special defense. As for the gold symbol challenge, Bring a solid rock type. That's the best I can give you. Uh, don't have, don't, don't let it be a ground type. Make it be a pure rock type, so that you can deal with Articuno and Moltres very easily, and then also deal with Zapdos. And you don't want Articuno super affecting your rock type because it's bound to be slower. Okay, wow, that was a lot to explain. Although that didn't even really get into the very nitty gritty with the Battle Pyramid because the, I think the pyramid is the most complex. And again, another place you're probably going to want a very special team to conquer it with. But, finally, I can explain the easiest one of all, and that is the Battle Tower. Okay, so the Battle Tower in this game behaves like any other Battle Tower. You are given four different options on which you can, uh, four different battle formats. You got a single format, you got a double format, you got, I think this is the, what is this one? This is the multi-battle, yes, yes, yes. And then this one, I think, is the team double battle. Let's see. Battle Tower. I'm your guide to the Link, link Multi. Oh, that's right. Okay, so Link Multi Battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Battle Tower is very straightforward. You battle your way up the Battle Tower with a very with a set team. Make your way through. 
defeat trainers. Once you defeat enough, you will be spat out, and then you do this over and over again until you finally get to, oh my gosh, uh, Annabelle herself. That's right, that's who it is. It's Annabelle. Now, Annabelle is known as the Salon Maiden, and she is no joke. She is going to be throwing legendaries at you as well. Annabelle is going to have in her silver battle an Alakazam with Bright Powder, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Disable. Entei with a Lumberry with Fire Blast, Calm Mind, Return, and Roar. And then at Snorlax with a Quick Claw with Body Dram, Body Slam, excuse me, Belly Drum, Yawn, and Shadow Ball. So watch out for that belly belly drum. If it gets a quick claw off, you're screwed. This thing is this. <laughs> she is no joke. She is one of the hardest for sure. I would say right up there with Brandon. She's gonna kick your butt if you're not prepared. Gold challenge is even worse though because you have Raiko with Thunderbolt, Calm Mind, Reflect, Rest, and a Lumberry. Latios with Psychic, Dragon Claw, Calm Mind, Recover, and a Bright Powder. And Snorlax with Curse, Return, Rest, and Shadow Ball and a Chesto Berry to wake it up. Obviously. Needs to have that as well, just to make it all that much harder. Battle Tower is very self-explanatory. It's been in almost every Pokemon game since Generation 3. This was the only facility you could come across with Ruby and Sapphire. Pretty much everybody knows how the Battle Tower works, and it's no different in this game, but it is the most fleshed out of all of the facilities. This is another place you're going to be spending a lot of time. Get yourself a solid team. I would recommend going after a rain team if you can, but get a very solid team and just work your way up through the Battle Tower. Farm battle points and prepare yourself for all the other facilities from here and the Battle Factory. Okay, so I feel like I've explained everything the best that I could without a script. Um, essentially, the order of things, in my opinion, the way that you're going to want to go through this entire place is you're going to want to start with the Battle Factory. Once you can conquer the Battle Factory, you are good to start moving on to the other ones. But in my opinion, the next one that you should go after, and this would be with the team that you have spent your time training using your battle points to get specific moves and specific hold items and stuff like that through the battle factory to then take on the battle tower this is going to be the next place you're going to want to basically solely focus on while you train your other teams that you need to take down the other facilities after that go to the battle pike at that point the battle pike should be pretty easy to go through outside of rng it shouldn't be that difficult rng might screw you a couple times be prepared for that then go on to the battle dome and that can be your last hurrah with your your specific team now or your core team i should so, uh, i should say now your specific teams will come into action first things first i would go to the battle arena because that is the easiest of the final remaining three take care of the battle arena then go on to the battle pyramid this is going to be your last stop and finally finally your hardest challenge is going to be none other than the battle palace it is going to kick your butt the most it is going to be the hardest to deal with go with that one last trust me you're not going to want to try to fight it right off the bat. You are going to struggle a lot unless you are the most lucky individual alive. So yeah, that's the order of how you're going to want to take care of everything in the Battle Frontier. Once you have done everything, you will be rewarded with a couple things from Scott, like some unique berries that you can get, like the Lumberry and the Scarf Berry. He will also give you some interesting plaques that you can put in your secret base. These are also done by getting consecutive victories as well, so this is why you don't want to lose any matches. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Battle Frontier. So that took me three episodes just to explain. Can you imagine how long it's going to take me to actually do it? Yeah, that's why it's not happening in this Let's Play, folks. It's it's not. Not, at least not on YouTube. I might Twitch it someday um, if I can probably, I'd probably have to cheat my way to an actual team to make it work, which I could do. It would still take a while, though, because of the because you can't really cheat your way through EVs and IVs in this game. You still have to kind of do that legit. So um, we'll certainly see. I, I'll, I'll I'll have to I'll have to work on it if I if I ever end up doing it. But for now, all that remains here in this let's play is catching all of the legendaries, going over contests, and then one last remaining thing. And I'm going to keep that one a secret until we actually get to it. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking because I've done so much of it over the past couple of episodes that I'm actually tripping over my words. So I'm going to go take a break. And then after this break, we are going to jump on into legendary catching. There are so many to catch. We have our roaming legendary to go after. We have other Regis to go after. We have Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza to go after. And yes, we do have all of the event legendaries to go after. I will be catching every single one of those in this Let's Play. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode very, very much. 
and I will see you all in the next one.